Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, everybody. How you doing today? It's your pal, Uncle Bruce here. Stock markets with Bruce. Uh, getting things going for another fun day. It's Thursday, June the 15th, 2023. Halfway through June and a couple more weeks. Halfway through the year. <laughs> what? Unbelievable. Um, boy, uh, we're all getting older, aren't we? Uh, welcome to the party, pal. Rugman uh, might be working today. We'll see what happens with this uh, with this market uh, situation. Uh, we had the um, Federal Reserve yesterday uh, not increase interest rates in the United States. And then we had just a few minutes ago, 20-odd um, minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, we had the ECB raise interest rates. Uh, they've raised their rates by a quarter of a point. That was expected. The non-rate rise yesterday in the U.S. was expected. Uh, the Canadian rate rise and the Australian rate rise was not expected, but it has already happened a couple of weeks ago. So now we move on and see what happens going forward. The markets themselves are kind of sitting there going, well, we got what we expected. What should we do now? Um, and, uh, a lot of people out there were wondering, well, wasn't there supposed to be a profit taking sell-off in the markets after, uh, the Congress of the United States and the Senate and the administration in the U S worked out that debt ceiling deal. That was all the talk. It was just the so-called crisis in America, that America would default on its debt. That reached a crescendo and just, and we signed it off and it's all good now. And now that isn't an issue for two years. We don't have to worry about that stupid issue at the moment, apparently. There was supposed to be a sell-off. Uh, the market was supposed to back off now. Uh, didn't happen. Uh, well, okay, well, the interest rate thing with Powell, that'll do it. Uh, um, not Really, uh, we're down 50 points on the Dow, 0.16 of a percentage point with uh, 54 minutes to go. Where, where is, where's the sell-off coming from? What? Then we have something new in town. Um, a number of you are now hearing about it. Uh, you started hearing about it about two weeks ago. If you're just a casual observer of the markets and occasionally listen to here in this uh, headline or an announcement from the news sources, if you're here with this old man, you've been hearing me yell about this now for several months. AI, artificial intelligence, chips, software, internet, uh, this AI phenomena is taking over. If you're a parent, you got kids in school. Uh, you got kids in school at starting at grade four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. High schoolers, junior high schoolers. You got those kids in your house. You know all about AI. You've heard about it from them. You've heard about this uh, this uh, chat, artificial chat, GPT crap. You've heard rumors and stories and what the kids think they're hearing about and talking about and watching on TikTok and Instagram and everywhere else, all about this artificial intelligence that is going to help kids with their essays, uh, their homework. Uh, that You've heard rumors that some kids have been using this artificial intelligence, whatever, to do their assignments. It's all the talk in school. And then you've heard from the kids indirectly about, oh, so-and-so got caught, uh, you know, that lazy, that lazy kid uh, in so-and-so class uh, handed in an assignment. They thought they were Mr. Smarty Pants or Mrs. Smarty Pants, and they got caught red-handed having used GPT software or whatever the heck it is. Um, you, you know all about it. If you're those parents, you know. Um, if you're at work uh, in a large organization, you've heard all kinds of talk about artificial intelligence, all kinds of rumors about, oh, wow, if uh, our firm adapts the software programs and these new, you know, these new fan dangled, fancy dancy AI, whatever solutions, 
we're going to say goodbye to three quarters of all the employees in the accounting department. We're going to say goodbye to a whole bunch of people in research. We're going to, because the company will be able to run a lot leaner and meaner with all of these uh, tasks being done uh, by machines rather than by human beings. And so it, it's running rampant. The Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates in the U.S. Un until yesterday uh, to try to slow the U.S. economy down a little bit to tame inflation. Of course, the Federal Reserve keeps for forgetting the fact or ignoring the fact that Americans are not responsible for inflation. The party that is responsible for inflation can be traced right back to the very end of the lockdown, just before the lockdowns were reversed and the, op the world opened up again. It was all the pricing that came in to the US consumers and, and European consumers by shippers who all of a sudden got orders to fire up their engines in their uh, cargo ships, these container ships. These container uh, ship companies were raising rates by 500, 1,000% due to demand because the fear was in, for example, America, that uh, Target and Walmart and Costco and, and, and everybody else, they were afraid they wouldn't get their merchandise into their shelving fast enough for the recovery. And so they began to agree to pay ridiculous amounts of money to shippers to get crap delivered to them. And in some cases, like in the case of Costco and, and in the case of Walmart and others, they started to acquire their own ships to, to move their own containers without uh, going through shipping operators. That caused a, a massive inflation spike into the U.S. economy, into the Western world economy. And people got greedy. Uh, funny how human nature is. Uh, people got greedy out there. And the American consumer was all of a sudden forced to pay much more for everything because once one item goes up in cost, other items go up in price because there's a chain reaction effect down the line. But the Federal Reserve has decided that the way to combat inflation is to slow down the U.S. economy. And a way to slow down the U.S. economy is beat the crap out of its own American citizens by trying to get U.S. companies to hire fewer people and slow down the economy, get people to uh, be worried about their jobs and not ask for as, as large a raise as maybe they were entitled to. And has that worked? No. It hasn't worked at all because the American worker has figured something out. Uh, it took a while. And, and again, there isn't just one style of American worker. There are a gazillion different kinds of American workers. But the reality is that um, organizations, large organizations, feed off of massive amounts of employees to produce goods and services for the corporation that it can then resell and they produce a lot of product, a lot of research, a lot of data from the cheapest paid employees. And then these are marked up again and again and again to be sold to other corporations for much higher prices. It's the American way. Um, but the problem is, or the reality is that you have the top 1% of management at the top of these outfits, the top of the food chain, who make gazillions of dollars. And then you have the managers, VPs and managers, and then you have the grunts. And the grunts are looking around going, you know, there used to be uh, 5,000 of us in this head office. Uh, used to come to work every day. And then they told us to stay home, and uh, we, were, we were beginning to learn how to work from home. And many of us have figured out how to work from home. And uh, we're quite happy working from home. And um, now they're trying to get us to come back. And we're just not going to do it. And uh, we're, we're going to go elsewhere because the only way to get a raise in this country is to quit and go somewhere else. If you're at the bottom end, if you're on the top end, you're always being pursued by headhunters. But if you're at the bottom, you have to quit and go somewhere else. Well, these folks figured out, you know what? I can quit and go somewhere else. Uh, I, I have a good friend of mine that I know who quit their job at XYZ Corp, went to ABC Corp over there and got a 30% pay raise. 
I get another relative of mine or a friend of mine or someone I used to work with. The word is out. And so people are doing this themselves and saying, I'm willing to switch jobs to another company if I can work from home or if I can get a hybrid kind of a scenario, get what I want financially. And that's what's been going on. And um, of course, the other issue in the United States and, and in some other countries, Canada, not as much, but definitely in the U.S., there are such restrictions on the uh, the uh, entry, uh, the legal entry way into America is is a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. Many many foreigners uh, who are highly qualified for good paying gigs, they don't bother coming to the United States. They know they can't get uh, citizenship. They can't get uh, uh, you know all kinds of, of 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 recognition of their degrees, for example not going to be recognized in America. They're going to have to start as janitors to get jobs. It's same in Canada. We have, we've had scenarios here where um, the radiologists and uh, pharmaceutical technicians from other countries, they come to Canada to immigrate and start a new life. And they find out that all of their graduate degrees they have are worthless here and they have to start at the freaking bottom. And uh, there are Uber drivers in Canada that are radiologists and our hospitals are dying for radiologists and on and on go the exam it's all across the board in every field legal accounting uh architectural engineering design it's the same in canada the u.s elsewhere it's a labor shortage there's a labor shortage the real problem in america and in canada is uh, and canada's trying to resolve this as a little more aggressively than the united states is because of the United States political nightmare that they're in down there, they can't get their act together to put a legal formula together to bring in workers, to bring people in to immigrate. In other words, regular folks who will take the jobs that pay 15 to 20 bucks an hour. There aren't enough legal bodies coming in for those jobs. And so what do employers do? They're entrepreneurs, you know, employers are going to hire anyone they can get their hands on. And if they go to an employment agency that says, oh, you need 500 workers at 15 an hour, I can get you 500 workers at 15 an hour, or I can get you 500 workers at 20 an hour. They'll get paid 20 bucks an hour for their workers. They pay their workers 14 an hour. They keep six bucks an hour on 10,000 employees and make a ton of money. The trick, of course, is uh, that a lot of these workers aren't legals. They're illegals. Uh, they have come in illegally and they are willing to work for a discount to have a job and have cash flow, but they don't want to get caught by the immigration services. Employers look the other way uh, or claim that, hey, uh, we hired company blah, blah, blah to bring people in. We didn't know that these were illegal. Yeah, yeah, they didn't know. Uh, in America, there is a shortage of grunts of, of the Indians. There's chiefs everywhere. We have chiefs everywhere ready to, to, to uh, rule the world. It's the grunts that are going to do the hard work. Those army ants, uh, there aren't enough of them going around. And there's a labor shortage at every level. Uh, maybe not at the top 1%. Uh, although I will say it's likely that some organizations have, you know, one percenters. Some of those aren't qualified to be one percenters. But there's so little competition for employment that even some of these underqualified one percenters get jobs that pay ridiculous money. Once you're in the club, you're in the club, and who knows? I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's what's going on in various areas. I, I might be all over the place today. You'll have to forgive me for that. Um, Europeans raised interest rates quarter point this morning, uh, quarter percentage. We'll see how that affects the markets and futures and currencies and everything else. It should be bad news for the U.S. dollar. Uh, yep, and it is. I noticed the euro is up against the U.S. dollar this morning, and that should be the same with the British pound. And uh, yeah, it looks like the British pound is pushing 12661. Eh, it's up a little bit. Nothing crazy, but uh, if rates are going up outside the United States and not in the United States, the U.S. dollar will lose value, uh, which makes American goods cheaper, but makes imports more expensive. And so you've got that. For the Fed, they might be going, you know what, this could be good because if the American dollar slumps a little bit and it makes it more expensive for Americans to get stuff, they don't buy as much stuff. That might be better for us. Uh, but uh, lower interest rates means a hotter housing market maybe, 
a better office market, maybe better credit conditions for business to raise money. That spurs economic growth. Does the Fed actually want to do that? Or is the Fed actually interested in slowing down economic growth? If you don't raise rates, you are subsidizing business by making it cheaper to be in business here than elsewhere. China, two days ago, lowered interest rates inside China because the Chinese have got a nightmare of a problem, a major evolving nightmare, which started two years ago with the collapse of their real residential uh, markets um, from overbuilding. Uh, commercial real estate in China is in big trouble in many areas. Many skyscrapers completed are empty in China because there are no tenants to take the the uh, units many investors in china families and individuals who have saved viciously saved money incredibly uh, upwards of 25 percent of incomes made by a lot of chinese families is saved uh, is saved for the future these uh these uh, folks um uh, took a lot of their savings and bought up condos um housing that was supposed to be you know just down the street here from where we live we're supposed to there's supposed to be these 40 story condo buildings we got 10 condos in there and the thinking was that the family which is growing would have housing uh, grandma and grandpa will be in this one and the aunts and the uncles over there and the cousins will be there and the buildings aren't there there are just vacant lots that have been cleared out and there's a hole in the ground for a foundation and that's as far as it got and uh, there are a lot of chinese going uh, you want me to make mortgage payments on a condo that you haven't even built yet you can forget about that so in china there's a nightmare going on um there's another nightmare going on in china and that is uh, graduates every year another i don't know how many million chinese graduate from engineering schools uh, uh Trade schools, uh, academic academic uh, schools, doctors, engineers, potential lawyers, and on and goes. Uh, these folks have to be employed. Uh, the Chinese economy needs to create so many millions of jobs every month to handle the population of over a billion people to keep them employed. Um, the problem here is that these uh, twenty-something uh, Chinese graduates who have been in school now all their lives who've been told study hard and follow the communist line and there'll be a wonderful future for you in this solid growing middle class of China. Uh, these folks have gra are graduating and they're going, where's my job? Where's, where's, where, there's no job. There, there's no jobs right now. You got to live with mom and dad and wait it out. This is piling up every quarter, every year. This is piling up. There are more and more idle Chinese youth with nothing to do. And that's not good for the Communist Party of China. This is not good at all. So what do you do? Uh, you encourage them to join the military. Uh, why don't you join the military? Well, that's great if the military needs people in the military. It's bad if the military has nothing to do. And so, well, maybe we could get the military a little more active to kind of give our young kids something to, you know, get all excited about. And so on, we rattle our chain over at... Uh, thailand a little bit and why don't we buzz american warships in international waters and fly jets uh, across the front of a reconnaissance plane you know kind of mix it up a little bit um uh, but that isn't enough to keep them employed either so what do you do do you build do you create more bullets uh, do you uh, create more uh, um uh, shells uh, and send and sell them to russia do you sell russia a willing buyer all kinds of bullets, guns, ammo, and missile systems, and everything else, uh, keeping employment going in China. I mean, you gotta gotta do something if you if the American consumer is not going to buy something made in China that is for the consumer. When well, we're going to have to make other products that someone's going to have to buy from us, and maybe we have to make more bullets and more howitzers and who knows whatever they're making. Uh, there's that. We'll see how all that works. Anyway, China's having issues, and uh, it's uh, affecting the rest of the world because Europe is finding that uh, Chinese aren't buying as much European product as they were four years ago because they don't need as much. Uh, America's finding that the China-American relationship is difficult to expand and grow on if you have tariffs uh, on Chinese goods coming to the United States, which, which is a tax on Americans for Chinese goods. 
you do that kind of stuff, you're slowing down growth. And that is eventually going to come back and bite you in your own country. And so how is that going to play out? In the meantime, the Federal Reserve is actually trying to slow down the economy on top of everything else. Uh, we have a lot of confusing uh, things going on all at the same time. Welcome to the investment business. Uh, now you know what uh, what the kids in Wall Street have been dealing with for decades. Uh, used to be that you would be, uh, if you are on holidays and you decided to take a trip to New York City for a week, uh, maybe you were coming in from the suburbs into Manhattan to see what was going on in Manhattan today. You would come in on a subway car uh, loaded with people from the burbs coming into town. And uh, you'd look up and down the subway and you'd see uh, all these folks in corporate, uh, corporate clothing sitting there with their newspapers wide open. And they'd be reading the paper. And uh, you could tell who did what for a living depending on what kind of paper they were reading. They were reading the New York Post. They might be reading the latest scandalous information going on about the local politician or somebody got there, you know, somebody got caught robbing a bank or something like that. But if you uh, watched, uh, some folks were reading the Wall Street Journal. You could tell that the the gentleman reading the Wall Street Journal was wearing a nice suit um, and uh, was well dressed and w excellent hair. Uh, you had that crowd, crowd. You had the financial crowd. You had the grunts. You had everyone else. Today, it's all uh, head down uh, looking at these, um, looking at these things for information. The newspaper has gone onto that, and uh, no longer are people holding their newspapers out like this anymore. That has all changed in the last 25 years. Uh, but for 50 years, it was the same. From the 40s right to the 2000s, uh, any bus, any subway, any rail um, uh, car that was going into Manhattan uh, the passengers on those um, devices were all reading newspapers and were following up on the latest news that had just been printed in the last three to six hours. Um, and that's how they got their latest information. Some, of course, grabbed their pens and were doing crossword puzzles on the back of the uh, newspaper. Today, it's all done on the on little, little telephone, uh, wireless communication. Everything has gone digital. Isn't that amazing? And then, of course, uh, folks trading the market uh, while they're commuting into work. They're trading the market. They're trading their option trades. They're looking at the research. Uh, then there are those who are listening to Howard Stern, uh, listening to other uh, entities. And then there are some folks who are commuting to work uh, and are going about their lives in their vehicles, wherever, and they're listening to Uncle Bruce. And they're listening to this old man through a digital device uh, talking about the, the good old days. Uh, amazing, isn't it? Um, freaking phenomenal, I say. Uh, we're down 75 points on the Dow Jones. We're down 19 and a half on S&P. We're down 110 on NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is down 0.7%, S&P 0.44, the Dow 0.22. Oil is only up 47 cents now at 68.74. Not looking good on oil. What is going to happen in the market? Kids, uh, those of you who have done what you had to do and you finally did it, uh, I, I, I am I'm so hopeful. I'm just hoping. I, I, I'm always sitting here going, I hope that you listen to me. Did you do your rollovers like I told you to? Did you do that? Did you roll your Tesla contracts way up there did you roll your GameStop contracts did you roll um your put contracts did you did you were you able to go from five six seven eight so far puts into nines and tens did you do that if you did do that if you were able to roll forward your contracts on a number of these stocks that i have been begging you to work on many of you are about to begin to see some absolutely wonderful uh, uh, returns. Uh, just noticing here three minutes ago, a headline came out. SoFi stock is set to snap a record winning streak after a downgrade. Oppenheimer is pumping the brakes after a 100% plus rally in SoFi shares this year. SoFi shares were on track to snap a record nine session win streak Thursday after an analyst abandoned his bullish call on the financial technology name. Uh, Oppenheimer analyst Dominic Gabriel downgraded the stock to perform from outperform. 
uh, the rating didn't uh, the rating change didn't reflect major concerns about SoFi's recent but uh, recent but rather was a reaction to the stock's sizable move higher. Um, uh, we aren't worried about any of these items today, except we're cautious on the credit heading into year-end across coverage. Uh, they're strong supporters of the company and management. We like what they're doing. Da, 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 um, and that's all she wrote. I don't know if they uh, changed their uh, their guidance. It doesn't look like they changed their guidance. They're just rating it from uh, uh, outperform to perform, uh, from what I can tell you. Uh, do you want to read a lot into that? Good luck, um, I guess. Uh, the shares are 9.23, down 51 cents. They've been here all morning around 9.20, 9.30. Uh, so this really isn't all that much of a thing. Um, we'll have to watch and see what happens with that. Again, if you have taken my uh, advisory uh, comments and you've taken my, you know, my thoughts saying to you guys, you, I think you really should roll your contracts, and you did it this week. I'm proud of you. Uh, Ricardo M. is in the house as a new member, by the way. Thank you, Ricardo, for joining the uh, the gang. Gold Bagel Level, uh, thank you, Ricardo, for becoming the latest and greatest member of the Gold Bagel Member Club. It's great to have you here. Also, thank you for the 92 thumbs up. Um, those of you who moved up your Tesla calls, I'm really happy. I, I, I'm, st I'm just thrilled you've done it. Um, uh, some of you were able to roll your Tesla calls uh, from the high 100s to the mid 200s. In some cases, you went from the low 200s to the high 200s. Um, a number of you have, have now rolled into 260s, 270s, 80s, all the way up to $300 a share. Some of you rolled all the way forward to 2025, and I've said it a million times, I don't mind that. Um, I support you uh, in that move. Uh, the shares this morning on Tesla, they're down 771 at the moment. They were down buck ninety-two yesterday. Yesterday, we finally broke, broke a 13-day win streak on, on the stock. They hit 261 for the high, and, and they're now trading at approximately... Uh, where is this quote? Uh, two, 249. So that's where we're at right now. Well done. Um, other stocks that are backing up a little bit, uh, not like it's catastrophic. Um, AI is down $1.20 to 4164. Uh, I did a video on Sunday about this stock. Um, I released on Sunday a video when the stock had closed at $37 on Friday night, something like that. I said in the video, that if you want to uh, gamble on this stock, on its upside, uh, there's a way to do it with a little bit of insurance. And that is you uh, would write a cash secured put on AI by writing a $35 cash secured put, which was $2 out of the money at the time, and you would be paid about $11 a share for that wager. In other words, you're putting up $3,500 for a 100 a share uh, contract, one contract, one put contract, we have 3,500 bucks, and you're receiving in immediately $1,100 in cash, so that you're actually risking $24 a share on AI. So if the shares went down instead of up, they would have to go down to $24 before you would lose a penny on the wager that you're making on the company's ultimate upside, because the $11 premium you just received covered $11 a share of downside protection. I mean, this is this is a gift from heaven. And I even went into the example that if the shares went down to 20, you'd lose $400 on a $3,500 bet. And that's assuming, assuming you were exercised at 20 or you bought the, you, you sold off the, 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 the you want the call back? Yeah, you'd buy buy the call back, and you'd lose four hundred dollars on the transaction. Uh, wow, what a risk that was! Four hundred bucks for a thirty five hundred investment on the hot one of the hottest stocks in the market. Did you know that AI is one of the most shorted stocks in all the market? And in a percentage basis, it is massive. Thirty three percent, thirty five percent of all free floating shares are shorted. This is another GameStop, uh, but there's a difference. Going in uh, to this story, unlike GameStop, 
two years ago when investors found that there were more shares share shorted than existed GameStop had no money uh they had you know 100 million in cash they had 200 million in debt they, they, they were losing money this outfit is sitting on about 750 million in cash um and their phones are ringing off the hook for their software i mean these guys are on fire corporately um there's a big difference here the stock actually went up from 37 to 40 to 45 actually uh, yesterday day before yesterday uh, so it actually went up and so the puts that you could have written for 11 bucks monday morning were sitting at about nine ish uh yesterday at one point already they were already losing value which is the point you write a put to buy it back later at the lower price um but boy uh easy money or what uh write a write a cash secured put on atip uh on sorry on uh, on ai uh, and get paid eleven dollars in cash on a thirty-five hundred dollar wager, man, that is easy money. Um, I congratulate those of you who've done that. Those of you who've written, like I said, SoFi, uh, a, a, a Tesla, and you've written calls way up here on Tesla, and the shares are backing off. Good news because now you're sitting on likely out of the money calls. Those of you who are who've written two forties and two fifties and two sixties are probably going to notice maybe that if the shares go down to two twenty, you also are sitting on out of the money calls, and now the choice now options and and uh, and choices are coming your way. Good quality choices that you can take levers you can pull as an option writer anytime you want. Do you want to buy back a three hundred dollar two hundred eighty dollar call that you wrote out to twenty twenty five? and just write a $250 call instead if the stock goes to 220 and take the cash and just keep it out at 2025 still the same expiring or do you want to buy back a 2025 call that expires 280 300 call at a lower cost turn around and write a new call to replace that call that expires in 2024 or much earlier in 2025 you have that choice many choices all good coming to those of you who've done that on GameStop the shares uh, reached the $26 level uh, they kind of got up into this uh, uh, new 27 range uh, higher than where they were a week ago when they had their debacle with their earnings debacle and canceling their conference call uh, they're now 2550 so they backed off a little bit but again I encouraged many of you to roll up roll up roll up and you did and some of you scored some crazy prices I mean my God, some of you wrote some calls with massive premiums. You can now fold your arms and sit tight and enjoy this uh, little uh, consolidation. If the shares want to back off to 24, 23, many of you out there who have written 24s, 5s, 6s, and 7s, and up to 30s are going to be out of the money as well. And the calls will have dropped in value. Those of you who have written from 18 to 20s or 17 to 20s or the 21s and 22s, same thing your premiums are going to drop 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 giving you that little breathing room uh for some of you out there you're going to be able to easily write lower strike calls instead same expiry date for cash in your hand and or you're going to buy back 2025 expiry calls to write 2024 expiry calls or even 2023 expiry calls depending on where you're at and bring the calendar back to you uh Congratulations. Let's see how it all works out. Uh, nice to have you here. Uh, uh, it's nice to see you. Uh, those of you who are into a couple of these SPAC stocks we've talked about now, number one is um, Sextera. C-Y-X-T was the symbol. Yesterday was the last day the shares traded, as far as I'm aware, on the, I believe, NASDAQ. I believe the shares now are no longer trading on nasdaq the last quote that is uh, showing and again i'm i'm uh, guessing here as far as my market watch shows the last quote i have was from last evening at eight o'clock eastern when they closed at 5.99 cents a share in the aftermarket there is no market on the stock this morning uh other shares that we're watching are atip physical therapy ati physical therapy they were yesterday, day before yesterday, 15 to 17 cents. Then yesterday, they kind of closed around that 20 cent mark. Um, the company had announced uh, that the shareholders had approved on a shareholder vote that they would authorize a 50 to 1 or up to a 50 to 1 rollback. Uh, 
That was done last night at the bell. The shares now are trading at 895 to 831, 895 to, to, to 950 a share, which basically means if you divide that number by 50, these shares are 17, 18 cents a piece in that kind of neighborhood. Uh, those of you who had uh, 10,000 shares, you now have 200. If you have 5,000 shares, you now have 100 shares. If you have 2,500 shares, you have now 50 shares of the company. If you can own 100 shares or more of this stock, you can write options against this stock. Now, the question is, what will the options be trading for when we open for trading? Uh, there were contracts expiring in June, July, August of this year, November of this year, and January 2024. Those are the only contracts in existence that I'm aware of. Now that the rollback has been done and the stock is in this $8.95, $8 to $10 range, could there be options available, made available by the options market for investors to utilize, to either buy options or write options? My guess is yes, but I can't tell you timing. I can't tell you uh, anything about that. I'm not the option guy. I'm not the one running the show. I'm just telling you what I know, what I see, what's going on. So we'll follow that. Keep in mind, because they did a 50 for one reverse split, that means there's only 1 50th the number of shares in existence now. That's the other reality of it all. So there aren't um, hundreds of millions of shares available anymore to trade. We're talking 1 50th the number of shares that are out there to trade. Now, I believe the, the numbers that I'm showing that are being shown to me on Market Watch are the pre numbers that there used to be 208 million in existence. Um, divide that by 50, and I'm guessing there's now 4 million shares in existence. Um, the public float used to be 57 million. Now it will be 1 million uh, in existence. Uh, 102 million were shorted. There will now only be 2 million short, which is still a large short position on not a lot of stock, which could run the market. Um, it is possible that these shares go to $15, $20, which would represent 40 cents a share on the upside. Uh, so if you're going to be an option writer, you may want to let this uh, settle in a little bit before you decide whether or not you're going to write an option on ATIP. I would love it. I would be delighted if the shares went to $20, $25, because that would put the shares between $0.40 and $0.50 cents a piece pre-split. That would be the highest levels we've seen in quite some time. But we'll have to wait to see if this all takes place or not. Pre-market on Tesla, $250, so down 636. So far right now, 922, down 52 cents on 3 million pre-market volume at the moment. All right. Welcome to the party, everybody. I'm glad you're here. Um, Beach Boy, oh my, looks like SoFi will be dipping nicely. Thank you. Oppenheimer says Beach Boy. Um, let's go. Moon Moose Knuckles. Uh, hey, Uncle Bruce, if the stock I'm looking at is currently 44 cents. And I sell a 750 uh, a cash covered put for 670 if exercise. I would only have to pay. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, <laughs> these are interesting theoretic questions. Uh, we're covering 100 shares. Uh, I'll be done with the trade. Probably the rest. I'm saying correct. And yes, I've taken your class. I just want to make sure. Uh, and yes, I've taken them. I just want to make sure ever since I wrote the covered put. Uh, so if the stock is. Uh, Trading at 44 and you sell a 750 cash secured put for 670. If I exercise, I would only have to pay 670 if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? I would have to pay the rest of the 670. Is that my thing? Yes. So, okay. So, if you write a 750 cash secured put, you have to put up 750 bucks right now. You got to put the 750 up and you would receive $640. Is that right? $670. All right. Uh, if you get exercised, you gotta you're gonna have to, you're gonna buy that stock for 750 a share. You've already got 670, so you gotta cough up cough up the rest, which is 80 cents. Um, that's what you gotta do, and the 80 cents is in that 750 bucks you got. So uh, that's how that works. And now you're along the stock. Um, all right, Ricardo. Hi, Uncle B. Hello, Ricardo. Thanks for becoming a member. 
Um, let's see. Uh, sheepy investor. I was only able to roll up the 220 on my Tesla, December 2025. Nonetheless, if the shares back off to the 220 mark, your contracts are worthless, which means the value of those calls is all air. It's all time. Now, where can the stock go? Uh, well, uh, it can go down to 100 and go up to 500. It can do that. We all know that. It's this is a Tesla. But uh, can it just go up for 25 days in a row and never go down? Uh, not likely. Um, will it have up and down days going forward right now? Probably. Could it go up $5 one day, down 7 the next, up $3 the next day, down 4 the next, up 10 down 8 up 5 down 10 Yeah, I could do that going forward for quite some time. It could have a, a kind of a trough. Uh, a trough of, uh, of of losses where you know it'll trade at a range, but it'll keep dropping and dropping and drop for quite a while. It's possible, Sheepy. The key here for you is if the shares want to give up some ground to this uh, uh, 225 neighborhood, 240 neighborhood, uh, 210 neighborhood, you are smiling, and you may find that. Um, as the shares reach the lower 200s, if that's what's going to happen, you will then look to roll backwards. You're going to go, well, um, I might write a 200 and buy back my 220s for December 2025. I'm just going to take the money. I might get my hands on seven, eight dollars a contract in cash if I downgrade from a 220 to a 200. I might just do that and put some money in my account. Option number two, shares are in the 200 range. I might buy back the December 225 and write a uh, January 2025 instead at 200. And that's a break-even trade for me. Uh, so now I've brought back 11 months in time. I've only had to give up $20 in exercise premium. But the shares are down here, not up there. Might do that. Um, that means your contract expires a year sooner, almost. Than the other one would. Uh, if the shares are 180, uh, very quickly to go to 180, you may find that you can write uh, a 180 call, a 190 call for um, June 2024 and bring a year and a half time back into your pocket as a necessary weapon if you need to use it going forward on another upsurge. You'll we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. All right, uh, fantastic. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go. BP I didn't get a good deal with the ATIP rollover. Then the option was 120, 150. They went to the one, oh, the option to, was one to 20 or one to 50. They went with a one with one to 50 share rollback. Not good for us investors. That's right. Uh, that's that's true. Uh, the banker that runs ATIP that that has the loan against ATIP that has financed everything. They're also the largest shareholder. Now, they want to get their dough out of this company. They want to find a way to bring investment money in. The brokerage firms may have said, we can't we can't raise stock, can't raise money for you by selling your stock. It's trading at 15 to 17 cents. We can't, we can't raise you any money. Now, if you were to reorganize your public corporation, keep it listed on the exchange, you know, at least a dollar a share or higher, 50 for one rollback will certainly do that. Now you might be able to issue preferred stock that is convertible into common stock. Maybe you can do seven to ten dollar convertible preferreds, and we'll go to institutional investors and say, "We'll raise for this company fifty million, a hundred million bucks in cash to issue preferreds that have a dividend yield of four percent, five percent, six percent. I don't know, and it's convertible into common stock starting in a year from now at eight bucks a share, seven, ten, twelve. Again, I don't know. That might be something. Um, on the other hand, the banker might say, I'm willing to put in um, cash into the treasury of the company to pay down debt that is owed me. I'll take paper in lieu of, of cash to bring down the IOU to the company, but I want to do it at uh, six bucks a share. And they might say, uh, we're going to issue 20 million shares at six bucks a share, raise $120 million. And I'll write 120 million off the loan. 
uh, that's interest free, under $20 million that interest doesn't have to be paid on. That might be more than enough to turn the company into a profitable company, which is what the shareholder wants. The shareholder now, the dominant shareholder, uh, will now have taken their equity cash into stock and they own 92% of the whole darn thing, but the company's profitable now because they don't have to pay 8% interest on their outstanding loan. I'm speculating here. I am throwing you th ideas that might be cooked up. Is this good for minority shareholders? No and yes. <laughs> no in that they're, you've done a 50 for one rollback. Yes in that the company could become profitable and the shares might go to 15, 20 bucks a share and eventually 25 to 30 a share. You only have 1 50th, but you're 1 50th of a profitable company as opposed to a company that went under. That could be it. I don't know. Uh, BP, uh, it looks like they're 770 right now. I'm showing 831 right at the moment. Same with Bobby. That's what we see right now. Double D, they're all over the place. You're right. We're all right. Uh, we're all correct. All right. People are just angry that it was 50 to 1 instead of 20 to 1. I understand. I understand. Bobby says 17 cents. That's 850 right now. 850 equals 17. $10 equals 20 cents a share. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Uh, thank you all uh, for uh, for being here uh, and the questions and everything else. It's good stuff. What else is going on here? Good morning from Larry Titus. I'm number 106 on the thumbs up. Uncle Bruce, walk us through what a healthy pullback on SoFi can look like. A healthy pullback on SoFi could look like... Um, you know, I don't know if there's a pullback happening here um, yet. Um, I don't know if the shares are overpriced. I don't know at, at even at 1023 yesterday if that's an overpriced stock or not. Uh, my hunch is it isn't. My my deep conviction is that's not overpriced. 15 a share right now would be overpriced for now. Six months from now, 15 to 20 might be justified. We're going to find out in the next few weeks and months how the latest quarter worked out, how many new members have come in, how much in deposit money are they attracting, paying out 4 plus percent interest on their cash with a $2 million guarantee insurance policy uh, for every investor, every depositor. Uh, how can this company be? Uh, this company is completely consumer friendly, depositor friendly. Uh, this stock uh, is not going back to $4 a share. And it's not going to see a $6 bid. I don't think so. I just don't think so. I don't care what Oppenheimer says and how they say it. It's okay. They're doing what they do. What they do. This is their this is their thing. They they give out their opinions. Wedbush, uh, they haven't upped their three dollar target, even though the stock hit 1023 yesterday. So go figure. Uh, will you see new uh, revised upgrades on this stock? I think you will. Um, I think Noto. It wouldn't surprise me if Noto buys more stock the minute he's allowed to. Um, because remember, there's holding times. There's times where he can't buy. These SEC rules about, you know, uh, annual meetings and and re quarterly reports. There's blackout periods. He can't speak. He can't buy. There's other periods where he can speak and he can buy, but he has to report. We'll follow that. But 929 right now on the market, down 45 cents. Is this a disaster? Uh, no. Is this completely normal? Uh, kind of, yeah. Um, would it surprise me if this broke 10 bucks today? No. Would it surprise me if it was 880 today for a while? No, it wouldn't surprise me either. But I would not bet against this stock for a lot of downside here. Not a lot. Um, and 45 cents is a nothing very good. Well, we'll see. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Are you writing on your SoFi? I wouldn't write calls on SoFi right now. I wouldn't be doing it. Uh, Christina, the gain we have seen over the past few weeks has been almost double. So what looks good and the way it's oversold, I hear you. I hear you, but it's way overdue. Uh, Bobby, I'm not writing on so far. Remember, this stock was uh, uh, six, seven, eight dollars uh, back in the, you know b before the year, the beginning of the year, um, and then we backed off. So it backed off first and it's recovered. It's now hitting new highs, 52 week highs, but not like double the highs from last year. Uh, you know, we should be at $15, $18 if we were really double the best levels of a year ago. So here at $9.29, we're not that expensive. I sure it's up, look, it's up four dollars 
from 529 a month and a bit ago. I had, I agree. You're right. I, I know that. But uh, where it came from, remember, uh, you know, when that Wedbush uh, came out with 250, calling it a 250 stock, that stock went from, what, five, six something to 445 in a hurry. That was BS, complete BS. And the market has shown the BS. But remember, what's happening now is there are there are analysts out there and, and financial institutions out there who are saying, oh, the stock has doubled since, uh, you know, in the last month. Yeah, it was artificially crushed to 455 by Wedbush's analyst. And they're using that number as where this stock came from. That's all BS. It's all bunk. You got to really look at this stock in the six and seven range and go, you know, it was really in the six, seven range before that crap came out from Wedbush, really. And we've gone from the six, seven mark to the 929 mark. Is that really ridiculously overpriced? I don't think so. This company two years ago, how many viewer, how many clients it had, how many assets it had, the fact that it wasn't a chartered bank, it hadn't acquired all these other assets since. What the moves, the moves have been made in 24 months for this corporation has been so massive. The stock is way behind. The stock is behind the company. That's what I'm getting at. So I don't know about this uh, backup. But hey, it's the stock market, people. Anything is possible, but I wouldn't be writing calls on this thing. I would not. I would not. I would not. All right, uh, David, what is the latest uh, date before the expiry that one should do a rollover? That might force these sitting on the fence to take action. Ah, uh, 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 David, uh, there's no there's no um, hard and fast rule. My, my attitude on it is if you've written a call on a stock and when you wrote it, you were at the money or out of the money, and the stock has risen, and you're now in the money, the alarm bell should be going off uh, already the minute that happens. Alarm bells. You should already be moving up in rolls. Uh, there is nothing wrong with doing five rollovers in five months on a stock that's going higher. There's nothing wrong with any of it. If you're on top of the option market, you can make this work. You have to be prepared to do rollovers at any time when the market tells you it, you're now in the money on your calls. You've got to be sitting on out-of-the-money calls or sitting on calls that have a ton of time value that can shrink away. That's how you make money writing options. You don't make money writing options being correct every single time writing in-the-money calls. That's gambling. You're gambling on a dip that may not come for quite some time or a dip that comes, but it comes way up here, down to here, and it's nowhere near where you thought it was going to be. Uh, this is where people get caught. Uh, Home Skillet did yesterday's show on the rerun. Uncle was outstanding work, my friend. Thank you. Marcus, number 114, thank you. Uh, Home Skillet, I'm the 42nd thumbs up today. Uh, Clay, SoFi's price right now feels like market makers are going to a short to take advantage of future Fed fears. Clay, SoFi's price right now feels like they're going to do this. Uh, Alfredo. Um, Uncle Bruce, I contacted, I contacted TD Canada yesterday. They upgraded my account so I can now trade options one-on-one -on -one incoming rock and roll. AJ, number 119, Wallop, uh, Wallopus, Wallopuctus, I can't even pronounce it, wrote $8 puts for June 30 on SoFi. That's safe, right? You've written an out-of-the-money put contract on SoFi. Whatever cash you got will go towards the cost of the stock if you had to buy it at $8. So I don't know what you got. Did you get 30 cents, 50 cents? I don't know what you got. But uh, you're out of the money. If the stock stays over $8, those June 30s are worthless. There you go. I don't even know what they're worth. Space Burrito, writing SoFi cash secure puts if we dip under nine. Spicy, do you think we should still be uh, looking at rolling GameStop long calls or wait? You should be rolling GameStop. Yes, you should. If you're sitting on 17, 18s, 19s, and 20s, you should be rolling your GameStop. Yes, yes, and yes, no matter how far out you got to go. Dude, number one, two, three, Zed, I'm number one, two, seven. Spicy, I'm 131. Ken, I snuck in there at 126. Thank you for the thumbs ups, everybody. Zed Estate, Uncle Bruce, I have 100 shares of Tesla at 117. And I've written a cover call uh, at 120. And I've been rolling multiple times. I am now at a strike of 175. 
but each role has been in the money. What should I do? Oh, if you can do another role and go up to 195 or 190 or 200, do that. Um, go further out and uh, move it up. Absolutely. Go as Keep on going. You got a ways to go yet here. Uh, Splair, Algorithmus, have you seen my question in the PayPal donation? I just missed prime time, so I had to get sure that it was the way to go if SoFi goes on dropping. Um, I do not recommend writing calls on SoFi. I just don't do it. Uh, I've been consistent here since the stock was for something. And I'm telling you guys, if you are writing calls, you are playing with fire because this stock bias is 15 a share. It's not five. It's going to 15. You guys want to write eights, nines, and tens? You're taking your life in your hands. You're going to have uncomfortable positions where you're going to have to do rollovers. And I can't tell you how many emails I've received last week and the week before. People confessing, I wrote fives, I wrote sixes, I wrote sevens, I didn't believe you, I went against what you said, I, I should have listened to you. I get these all the time, and I just, it drives me nuts because I'm looking at this going, a sure-fired winner is SoFi. Corporately unbelievable winning company. This stock will catch it, will catch up to it, and you guys are going to get burned. And sure enough, a bunch of you out there are sitting on calls, and you're just going, I sold calls. I should have written calls at six. Uh, I wrote them at seven, and now they're three in the money. Yeah, they're three in the money. And what did you get for them? 60 cents, 80 cents, 90 cents. Big freaking deal. Um, you, you, you took short-term pennies, and you gave away dollars. What can I say? Uh, look, it's not too late. Uh, you know, you can still buy back calls and write other calls if you must, uh, but boy, you can't be writing calls down here thinking it's going to five, six bucks. You just can't be thinking that. Good morning. Sell my house fast. Number 135. Thank you for joining us. We are, uh, we're opening here. Uh, Ms. Blair, uh, I'm sorry. I said it wrong. It should sell our deep in the money GameStop and roll up for more money, like 15s to 18s. Definitely move up. B. Tizzle, what was that? Dell is leading the indices. It's been a while, Mr. Jones. Splair. Okay, thought you mentioned something in the January 10 right there. Larry, thank you for the bell. Splair, uh, MK, I sold calls, $12 strike until 2025, and I don't mind if they take away my shares. Rock on, rock on. Thank you, Larry, says Splair. Zed, um, Uncle Bruce, I have a major, I have major urges to write on SoFi, but I've been writing cash secured puts. Good move, good move, good move. Uh, welcome, Larry. Thank you for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, the bells this morning. We're up and uh, and open for business. We're going over to comments for members only. Those of you who are here, thank you all. Please become a subscriber of this channel. Please become a member of this channel. Uh, join uh, a recent add-on, uh, recent newbies that have joined in and consider becoming a gold bagel level if you want to get trade alert information and or the Wednesday night primetime shows. Thank you, every single one of you, uh, for being here and and uh, becoming part of this uh, family. It is so much appreciated. Yesterday, we hit 292 thumbs ups. What an amazing run yesterday. Thank you, everybody. 137 thumbs up so far uh, have come in the house. Thank you uh, for that. Uh, I appreciate it. We're open on ATIP at 860, I think. Uh, best I can see from here, uh, we'll keep an eye on that as we will on all the other issues out there. Obviously, we got a lot to watch here and follow. What a run we're gonna have here! Oh my gosh! And tomorrow is expiry day for the third Friday of the month, it's gonna be wild. Uh, the Dow at the moment, uh, I think we're up seven points, but I could be dead wrong on this. Just bear with me, folks. Uh, I'm behind here. I think we're up 24 on the down. Not sure. Uh, anyway, what else is going on? Thank you. Thank you all. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, Ed Hawkins, I just want to say I did not write calls on SoFi. Nicely done. Bobby, no options available on ATIP this morning. Yeah, early. Uh, it might take a few, uh, an hour or two. We'll see how this all works out. I'm sure Chicago is figuring out all those systems and realigning the thing and getting it all worked out, and oh, God, what a mess. Um, A-T-I-P, where are we? 860 uh, down $1.36 uh, 
from yesterday's uh, close. Um, uh, but remember, we're talking about a company that has just had a 50 for one rollback. Uh, so at eight, 850, that's 17 cents a share, $9, that's 18 cents a share. 950 is 19 cents a share, $10 is 20 cents a share. 15 cents a share is 750. So this stock, 750 to 10, would not surprise me at all. 15 to 20 cents a share pre-split. That's what I'm expecting. Those of you who want to write options on ATIP when given the chance, and you've got 80 shares, you're going to need to buy 20 more at 8 bucks a pop. That's 160 bucks, but then you can write calls. If you have 55 shares, you need 45 more. If you've only got 15 shares, you're going to need 85 shares. Might be too much for reach. Those of you who have 220, 288 shares, 12 more, and you can write three contracts instead of two. So that might be worth your while as well. Uh, we'll see how this plays out. ATIP 860 down 136, I think, uh, on 6,200 volume. Multiply that by 50. That's 300 plus thousand shares of trading uh, as of yesterday's, you know, pre-split number, as far as I can see here. Matterport down two and a half, Nvidia down six dollars, Smart Rent down eleven cents, SoFi eight ninety seven down seventy seven, Rocket Lab down twelve, GameStop down twenty three, AI down ninety five, Unity down forty seven, Tesla down six to two fifty, Apple up thirty five, Google down a buck. These are early, 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 early morning quotes. Um, and I think Sixtera is definitely delisted. Nothing showing on Sixtera at all. Um, Ma Moderna down, is up a quarter. Cisco up six. Pfizer up eight. IBM up 26. HBQ down four. Microsoft up 19 cents. All right. That's what we're watching here. Uh, early, early four minutes into the market. 14 point gain on the Dow. Uh, I think, and uh, we have a little negative showing on the other markets. Let's just double check that as this opens up here. Uh, so far now 906, low was 888, now 906. Uh, Dow up 16, SP down seven and a half, NASDAQ down 52, oil up a dollar at 69.28 a, a barrel. Uh, and uh yeah interesting the ecb the european central bank they raised rates a quarter of a point and that means that right now according to this headline i'm reading this is a 22 year high for the bank rate in europe 22 year high this this, this is a shocking uh a headline um uh let me just double check here uh I don't think they showed the, what the rate actually is, uh, the highest level in 22 years. This gives you, uh, for those of you who, who are under, if you're under 30, if you're 35 and under, you have never known a time of higher rates than what we have right now, ever in your lifetime. Uh, because uh, you were 12, 13 years old, you know, 22 years ago. Uh, even 40-year-olds, um, if you're 40 today, uh, 18, you were 18 the last time the rates were at this level and you didn't give a crap because at age 18, 22 years ago, I know exactly what was on your mind because I remember what I was thinking about when I was 18 years old and it sure as hell wasn't interest rates. Um, yeah, most people 40 and under have no clue what the world was like with higher rates than we have now. Never experienced it, never had to deal with it. Uh, it's all news to you guys. It's all Turkish and Greek to you. Um, those of us who are this age, <laughs> nine, we remember 15 to 18 percent interest rates. And you youngins out there, look at us like we're out of our minds. Uh, you, you old farts talking about stuff that just doesn't exist. Um, and I, I know I sound like an old timer with a cane shaking, uh, my hand shaking, going, I remember. When I was young, I, I know I sound like that. And I had the same reaction when I was 20 years old, 25 years old, 30 years old. I had the same inner reaction to a 65-year-old telling me about the Great Depression and the and World War I. Uh, I remember those people telling me about those days. And I thought, you guys are crazy. Uh, the world back then was out of, out of, this, uh, out of this world. 
And now here I am telling you, 25 and 35 year olds, you guys are crazy because the world that you're living in right now uh, with uh, with uh, artificial intelligence and a war in, in, in Ukraine and a possible conflict with China, you guys are out of your minds. You guys, you guys are crazy. Well, we're all crazy. Uh, we were all crazy when we were 20. We're all crazy when we were 40. We're all crazy when we're 60. And we're all crazy when we die. We're nuts. And it is the way it is. And you've just got to buy into the world that you've landed on. Sorry. You're in this planet. You're on this planet. You're going to have to deal with this planet's quirkiness. But there are ways to enjoy life around here. Uh, it's just a question of how you do you, you want a better life than what you've been, the hand you've been dealt. There's ways to get a better life. Learn how to write options and let the option gambler make it your investments work for you. Oh, my gosh. Are we going to have fun? All right. <clears throat> Let's see what's going on. Uh, well, welcome all to the to the show. Um, um, not too much happening on the comment wise. That was up 48. Uh, we're down four on the S&P. We're down 50 on NASDAQ. We're not going down very much here. This, this market wants to go. Higher. Um, 912 on SoFi, 914, uh, 888 was the low. 961 on ATIP, uh, approaching, or uh, there it is, $10 a share on ATIP. That's 20 cents a share pre split. That's the highest level in months. Um, but again, it's all relative. Uh, those of you who had 5,000 shares, you have 100. Those of you who had 20,000, you got 400, uh, 200, whatever the number is, divided by 50. Um, there you go. That's the story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, um, the shares of ATIP are, are up and running at $10 a piece after the 50 to 1 split. I am now waiting, as are all of us, what is going to happen with ATIP next? And that is up to the dominant shareholder who happens to have a massive loan to the company that's it's in their hands have always been in their hands now they have control of this ten dollar stock company see what happens um let's see um um does uh, does sofi talk today i don't know clay 180 new member how you doing clay thank you for joining in a uh, chill with uncle bruce level nice to have you here welcome to the party pal it's nice to have you around nazareth i just rolled my gamestop october 20s and 25 strikes to november 27 strikes uh thanks for everything uncle b way to go pal uh gamestop at the moment is sitting at uh, 2567 down three so you're sitting on out of the money calls which are technically worthless nice nice clay i'm back baby uh just like george costanza's dad i'm back baby uh way to go pal <laughs> nice to have you here clay good to see you uh welcome back all of you some of you have been gone for a while welcome to brand new members who've never been members before great to have you you're joining a phenomenal family of viewers here who we share uh, information we uh, we uh answer each other's questions from time to time it's wonderful i love you guys the best family on youtube is right here on this channel 148 thumbs ups already thank you kids we're going for 200 every day we're on our way for that thank you so much for being part of this uh, channel it is uh, so so appreciated jen and i we love you guys thank you um if any of you have an interest in a one-on-one -on -one session with me, you let me know, um, and we'll see when we can squeeze you in for a one-on-one -on -one if you'd like to have one of those. All righty. Um, I'm not available this Sunday. It's Father's Day, and I am booked uh, today. I am not available on Sunday uh, this week. Um, all righty. Uh, what else going on? 918 now. On uh, on ATIP, uh, $9.18. We're jumping around like crazy. Um, we've got Matterport at $2.94, up $0.05 cents now. We've got uh, NVIDIA down only $2.68. Uh, we have Smart Rent down $13. SoFi is at $9.01 to $9.03. Volume on SoFi, $19.4 million in 12 minutes. A very active opening. Uh, anybody who wants out can easily get out, and there are people picking up the stock. There's somebody, entity, or things buying up the SoFi that's coming in for sale, no problem at all. Down 73 cents, not a bad day. 
interesting with this run. Uh, Rocket Lab uh, down 14 to 555. Uh, GameStop 2567 down three cents. Uh, AI up a dollar 28. Unity down a penny. Uh, Tesla down only three dollars at 253. Apple up 46. Google down 82. We've got uh, Moderna up 12, Cisco up 24, uh, Pfizer up 6, IBM up 24, HPQ down a nickel, Microsoft up 186, uh, ME up a penny, Spire uh, down about a half a penny, Amazon down 140, Home Depot up 170, Vanic Semiconductors down 150, and Netflix down, uh, up $1.39 at the moment. Uh, now I'm looking at a 56 gain, 56 cent gain on Netflix. Adobe down 189 to 477. What a run they've had. Goldman at 336 down 160. Boeing uh, down 63 cents. Facebook up 76 cents. Uh, Royal Caribbean down 67 at 9406. Alrighty, everybody, watching a lot of activity here. A ton of it. All right, a 64-point gain on the Dow, getting better. S&P up one point, uh, up three points on S&P. We're going higher. The Nasdaq's only down 15 points. We are going green on the markets. Across the board, the markets are going green. There's no sell-off here to worry about that I can see. Uh, this is most, most interesting. Um, thank you all for, for hanging out. The 154 thumbs ups and keep them coming in. Thank you for... Those of you uh, rejoining this channel as members, those of you joining this channel as members for the first time, upgrading your membership to gold level, those of you taking classes, thank you. Those of you who are looking for one-on-ones, you get a hold of me through an email and we'll see what we can do. All right. Fantastic, everybody. Welcome to the party. 74-point gain on the Dow. We're going higher. Yep, we're going higher. Uh, very interesting. Rocket Lab down 18, SoFi down just 60 at 914. Uh, GameStop down four cents. Coming on. Um, this is interesting, uh, as it usually is. Uh, Matterport is up a nickel. Um, 23 me up a couple pennies. Uh, ATIP 930 a share, uh, down 66 cents on a post split basis on ATIP 930 on a post split basis. Volume of 35,000 shares, multiply that by 50, 1.75 million approximately trading now. That is far higher than usual. And again, I'm expecting uh, something will happen in a sort of a very calm, measured way. I suspect a lot of folks out there that had ATIP shares um, less than 500, if they had 200, 300, 400, or they had uh, 850, or they had uh, uh, 1,300 or, or 1,800 shares. I expect a lot of those folks will buy up enough stock to get to the next 100 level, to get an even count to the 100 level, and then they'll be option writers. On this channel, that is the plan. I would not be surprised if that is the game plan around here. Uh, once we see the ATIP market, um, you know, settle out and and the option market actually open up, we'll then be able to sort of gauge uh, what to do and how to do it. Uh, this might take a day or two. I, I don't know. Um, I don't expect a lot of uh, of option activity yet uh, to show. Uh, I doubt they're even trading right now. I doubt there are accurate quotes out there, but I suspect there will be um, uh, options uh, created in the 250 mark or one dollar per share mark going forward, perhaps from from 250 to 15 dollars, uh, something like that. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, and you might be able to write options in the next few days as things settle in. But that I can't answer. Because I'm not the I'm not the authority that does this work. I'm just not the guy, so I, I can't tell you. All right, there it is. That's the story. Uh, thank you all for being here today and hanging out. It's great to have you. 155 thumbs ups and counting. Fantastic. Uh, and thank you for being here uh, with me today. Um, great to have you around. Um, markets are now 91 points higher 
for the Dow, uh, 6.8 on S&P, and the Nasdaq's only down 7 points. ATIP, 9.45. Tesla, 253. Uh, SoFi, 9, 19, 9.13. Inching higher now on SoFi, bit by bit by bit. Could SoFi break 10 again today? Yep. Yeah, it sure could. Uh, could it break 11? Yes, it could. I'm not saying it will, but it could. This is why I don't want you writing options right now, call options on SoFi. You don't want to be doing that right now. All righty. What else is going on here? Uh, folks uh, making comments. Thank you, everybody. Um, not a lurker anymore. Good morning, everyone. I'm number 148. I'm back to lurking. Uh, and not a lurker says to Clay, welcome to the channel. Uh, Clay, looking at the options chain for SoFi, the $9 calls that expire this week were 50 cents higher yesterday and the day before. Any market maker that wrote calls this week on the run-up made a huge payday. Uh, Uncle Bruce, is it October yet? Asks uh, not a lurker anymore. Christina, uh, June 14, 2023, 7 a.m., uh, Annual meeting of stockholders. Um, uh, let's see. Clay, nothing changed for SoFi in two days, so my vote for the price drop is shenanigans, says Clay. Uh, Christina, I guess it was yesterday. GameStop annual meeting today. Uh, Christina, today is 6-15-2023. Uh, no looker. No, JJ, I'm now holding only 86p ATIP shares. Not enough to write one cover call. You need to buy 14 more to do so, and so whenever you're ready. Uh if you're going to do it um and you know if you if you can bring in uh, i don't know if you can bring in two bucks uh on a 10 or 11 or a 12 going out a while there's a couple hundred bucks that'll pay for the shares you need to write the contract it's the contract that the, the option buyers will pay for your stock to get you to 100. that's what i'm thinking um Anyway, thumbs ups for Bruce says what year 1984. Christina, uh, could SoFi see 850 today? Eh, of course, but will it? Uh, 912 right now looks more like it wants to go to 10. Uh, 274 watching and only 159 thumbs ups. Question mark. Please support this channel with a thumbs up. Uh, DQ, I'm 159 right there. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming through. I uh, appreciate it. 163 thumbs ups are in here. Uh, 200 and uh, I know there's 200 and how many watching? I don't know. It's here somewhere. Uh, 273 watching. Welcome, 273 people. Hope you're having a good day, good week. Uh, it's been one hell of a week. Um, let's let the party continue on. Uh, should be fun. Uh, appreciate uh, all of you hanging out and joining us today and rejoining this channel as members. Uh, I just want you guys to get rich. Uh, nothing personal. I just want you guys to get really rich doing this work. Uh, let option writers take all the risk off of your hands. Uh, 968 on ATIP. Matterport, 297.5, up 8.5 cents. Um, NVIDIA down 393, but it's at 426 a share. Uh, Smart Rent, 334.5, uh, down 10. SoFi, 912, down 62 cents. Rocket Lab, is uh, 560 down nine that's coming back up gamestop is green 2583 ai is green 4479 on ai i i am convinced this ai can go to 100 a share uh this year um i am convinced with the short position out there this sucker's gonna go um you can write cash secured puts on this stuff uh, pretty pretty comfortably I did the video on, on Sunday, and I, I mentioned $35 cash secured puts. I think you can write 40s now. You can write 45s now. Um, yeah, and I'd go January 2024. I'd go out there with time, and I'd look for premiums. Big, fat, ridiculous premiums is what I want if I'm going to write AI cash secured puts. Uh, uh, I think that uh, anyone messing with this stock on the short side is going to get their butt handed to them. Um, there's only 90 million free trading and there's 33 million short. It's ridiculous. Is it, is it any wonder it's up 166? Not a surprise. Uh, not a surprise at all. Amazing, uh, markets here, uh, with some unreal premiums. If you are into deep in the money calls on AI, I congratulate you. You have done well, my friends, um, and you're going to continue to do well. 
Um, write options and do roll-ups when necessary, and don't be afraid of going out in time. Just don't be afraid. If you have to roll out to 2024 to, to 2025 Januarys, you do so. Um, make them come and get you at a higher higher price. Absolutely nothing wrong with this game at all. Let's take a look at January 2024 puts. Now, my quotes are, you know, lame. You know that. I know that. I don't have live trading level two or anything like that. I don't trade. So I'm looking at market watch on the bid asks on, on puts and on calls. Look at that. The 40s. If you want to write $40 puts on AI. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, $40 puts. They're out of the money. Um, you could get twelve fifty to thirteen twenty a put. Unbelievable. Let, let, let's just say it's thirteen dollars to pick a round number because I like I do better with round numbers. You you receive uh, you 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 put up uh, uh, four thousand dollars to write a cash secured put, just one on AI. All right, four grand is what you need. You want you have eight grand, you can write two. You got twelve grand, you can write three. All right, so you write one put. Forty dollars, January twenty twenty four. They'll give you thirteen hundred bucks. That means you are putting up a. You're willing to pay twenty seven dollars a share for AI. Hey man, uh, between now and January of twenty twenty four, a twenty seven dollar commitment to buy AI. How many puts can I write? Please, uh, this stock stays over forty a share. Those puts are worthless in January. I get to keep all thirteen dollars. You know, thirteen dollars on a forty, uh, a thirteen hundred dollar in on a four thousand dollar risk. I like this game. Uh, I like taking a third of my money, a thirty plus percent return, thirty five percent return for six months. Uh, yeah, I will take that bet every day of the week. Look, I told folks to write thirty five dollar puts on my video that I made on Sunday. If you haven't seen that video, watch it. You'll see the how I structured the trade and all that stuff. 3500 bucks is what you had to put up and you would have received $1100 Monday morning. Those puts right now are bid 940 and my quotes are 10 minutes old. So bear with me it might be lower than that. You're up 160 bucks in 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 two and a half days and this this put is still got 6 months to go. <laughs> And it's still offered at being bid 940, but you're already ahead on this game, and it's worthless. That put at 940 put is worth nothing. The uh, 4250s, uh, they're out of the money. Uh, you can get 1420 to 1490 for those. 1450 a contract for a 4250, $28 risk. You're at, you're willing, you're saying to the market, I'll buy AI at $28 for the next six months. I'm willing to make that risk. If you were to have, you had to buy those shares at twenty eight. You know what you're going to do? You're going to write a thirty dollar call option against that twenty eight dollar stock. You're probably going to get ten bucks for that. Six months further out, that means you're now risking eighteen dollars on this stuff. I mean, come on. I and mean, this is easy money. Easy money being handed out here. Unbelievable. The forty fives, uh, which are you know twenty five cents out of the money. 45, they're 25 cents in the money. 16 to 16.70. You can probably get 16.50 for those. Wow. Put up 4,500 and get 16.50 back. Wow. Wow. There you go. Yeah, I would suggest deep in the money calls on uh, a deep in the money. Um, um, if you can buy deep in the money calls, yes. And if you can write uh, 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 pu um, uh, cash secured puts, yes, I would do that. And definitely if you do have you do buy deep in the money calls on AI, you immediately write a call option against it. And to protect yourself, yeah, come on. You can look at writing a call option, a $45 option for January 2024. You can get back right now about $10.50, $11 right now. So if can you get a deep in the money call at the 90-10 rule? I don't know. That might be the, uh, that's likely the stumbling point here. The stock around $45 a $25 call is 21 to 24. If you could buy a $25 call at 22, 22 and a half, that would be a bargain. And then get $11 cash back against it by writing a 45. That is a great trade. That, that is brilliant. Uh, brilliant. 
The 20s are 24 to 26 ish. Uh, they're worth 44. Th th that's a buy. Um, man, you, you put up. Man, this is this is such a good deal. Put up twenty two hundred dollars and then write eleven hundred dollar call against it. Jeez, fifty percent risk taken off the table. Thank you very much. Uh, boy, this is easy money. Um, you want to have a one on one with me to talk about this? Uh, if you could buy ten of them, twenty of them, fifty of them, and then write fifty calls like this, oh boy, this is easy money. I don't know. I'm just just saying. Uh, what can I say? Thank you, everybody. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, DQ number fifty one fifty nine. Nazareth. So I sold these GameStop November twenty seven contracts for four forty five average. Come and take me out at thirty one fifty. I dare you. Take me out. Come on, come on. Take me out. Take me out. Come on. I'm here. I've told you what I'm prepared to sell for. One sixty five gain on the Dow. Everybody, we're going higher on these markets. Uh, we're going green here. And there's uh, opportunity in them there, Hills. Uh, man, oh, man. We're up 14 on S&P. We're up 10 on NASDAQ. Oil, 69.36. Uh, not a lurker anymore. DQ, good morning. Did you fire up the smoker yet? Uh, we've got SoFi 909. Smart Rent down a, down a dime. NVIDIA down 7. Matterport up 10 cents. ATIP 944. Rocket Lab 558. Giddy up. Not a lurker. I am doing a brisket Sunday for Father's Day. Maria Powell, 171 thumbs ups. Great morning to write. Cash secured puts on SoFi. Yes, it is. This is your opportunity. This is your moment. They are flashing the moment right now. Cash secured puts on SoFi. Now, 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 now. 912 a share. Now's the time. Absolutely. John Anderson. Hello, everybody. DQ traveling, not a lurker anymore. Says DQ. Cindy B. I was able to get five AI Jan 2025 20 dollar calls for 1965. You are stealing money from innocent people. How dare you do that? I love it. I love it. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Spare Uncle Bruce, no blame on you. So my brokers are giving me horrible charts. So I stick to Yahoo Finance with their live chart function. And sometimes it's freezing up. Not a lurker. Uh, DQ, ah, we'll be posting that on Discord. Left dog, make more people hungry. Zed Estate, Uncle Bruce, could you suggest a deep in the money call for AI, 20s or 25s? W Willie, number 121, um, not a lurker. Send Uncle Bruce thumbs ups. Everybody right now, hit the thumbs up button. 182. Thank you, everybody. Or need 18 more. Splayer, Uncle Bruce on first trade. I now I own now after selling 600 of my 642, 42 CYXD. What's your what year? 1984. Um, careful when you sell options. You may need to get out, and you must have that money available to do that. Those who are inexperienced may be caught in this trap. What year? Uh, but I uh, but I did, but I uh, was lucky because I was only one option. Clay, when I'm writing my cash secured puts, I feel like Schwarzenegger and Predator. Come on, I'm here. Do it. Make me buy the shares. I dare you to make me buy the shares. Clay, Clay, well said. Absolutely true. 187 gain on the Dow. We're going higher again. This money keeps coming in. Uh, we're up 14 on S&P. NASDAQ up 10. Oil up 109. That is what's going on, you guys. Fun times. ATIP, 50 for one rollback has been done. We're trading at 950 a share. That's 19 cents a share. And we were 15 to 17 all last week. That's where we're at on ATIP. Matterport, 299 up a dime. NVIDIA, 422, 34 down 760. Smart rent, uh, 334 down 11 cents. SoFi, 907 down 67. Rocket Lab, 560 down just 9 cents. GameStop down 11. AI up a buck 50 to 44.36. Buy those 20 $25 deep in the money calls. Right 45s, 47s, 48s, 50s out to Jan 2024 and take in ridiculous money. Why not? Um, Unity down a nickel. Uh, Tesla down 220, down 160 now to 255.19. Apple up a dollar 24. Google down 12 cents. Moderna down 43. Cisco up 18. Pfizer up 24. IBM up 90. HPQ up three. Microsoft up 336. We've got uh, Amazon down 45. Home Depot up 293. Vanek down two bucks. Netflix up 20 cents. Adobe down three bucks. Goldman down 89. Boeing is down a dime. Uh, Facebook up 240. Over at uh, 
Royal Caribbean down 61 cents at 94.16. What a ridiculous price for that stock. We got uh, Target up 280. JP Morgan down eight. Costco up 191. Walmart up a dollar. Disney up 21. American Airlines down 11. And DraftKings down 17 cents. Welcome to the party, everybody. And welcome. Auntie Jen. Hello. How are you today? I'm good. All right. A little stuffed up. Stuffed up a little bit. Big yeah. win. Yeah, we we've had we've <laughs> had to have more than <laughs> we got we got storms out there. We have rain out here uh, now for the second Dusted day. Up to sixty clicks. So what is that? Uh, forty miles an hour. Yeah, uh, thirty-five <laughs> miles an hour winds. Uh, yeah, yeah I've, I've always cool. been delighted when we're traveling around the world, and uh, they say how oh it's going to be windy today. <laughs> What are you talking about? This is a wind. Wind, You guys <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. All the time. Yeah, I mean, come on. Wind. <laughs> oh, uh, not even windy. Lethbridge is windy. Wind, wind, wind. Uh, Splair. So is the stock now CYXT Q instead of gone completely? It's possible if anyone can confirm whether or not yeah. Sixterra is trading on the pink sheets. Yeah. Can you find a quote on the pink sheets? Let me know. Let me know what symbol you have to okay, use. Here's the question. We'll see what's going on. Yeah. So if I shorted it and I need to flatten out, yeah. can I buy it on the pink sheets and do that? Theoretically, I think so. But it know. depends on whether your broker allows you to do yeah, buys right? on pink sheets. Not all brokerage firms allow it. And that's the problem for people trying to lock in capital losses. Right. If you can't close the position, I don't know if you can write it off. Ed, number a $9 SoFi puts for January 2024. 206 to 213 as the uh, price. Is this a good move? Nine dollar cash secured puts. Is that right? Uh, is that good? Uh, let's double check something here. Uh, let me see if I can do this on my big ass iPad. Uh, hang on. A uh, sofa 906 last trade. Uh, come on, machine. Uh, there it is. <laughs> Now 907, and I've just got to wait for it because it's really glitchy. Um, you're talking about which ones now? You're talking about Jan 24. So right on. Okay, hang on. It. Let's take a look. Jan 24. Uh, Nine dollar puts. Okay, I'm only showing them at 175 to 181. I'm showing call options at two to 211. You now you're showing puts at 206.13. I think you're giving me the call quote, not the put quote. If you want to write cash secured puts and uh, check the put side of the uh, chain, uh, I'm showing 175 to 181 on SoFi. Now, a $9 put with, a say, a 180 premium on it, um, that means you have to buy the stock at uh, 720 so there you go. If the shares stay above $9, uh, these are worthless uh, at the end of their life, obviously. So if the shares want to go to $10, $11, these might be down to 70, 60, 70, 80 cents in a hurry. Um, that's my got there. Not a bad contract to look at writing. Um, all right. Good morning, Auntie Jen from JR. Ed Hawk. And sorry, I was looking at calls. Gotcha. Um, and uh, Splair says, I can place uh limit orders on it due to first trade rules for pink sheets. DQ, get the wind up to 88 miles an hour, and then we're <laughs> gonna see some serious stuff. Says DQ, uh, James Burnaby, uh, I gave up 2000 per deep in the muscle uh, September 24 130s to June uh 24 170s. I like it, you moved up 40 bucks. Uh, four thousand a contract for two thousand. Good move. A splare, uh, yeah. Um, um, point zero two on test on CYXT. Uh, let's see. Uh, the, the Q has to be added there. Uh, James says, I meant June 24. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I got gotcha, you, buddy. Um, and uh, let's see here. Okay, Uncle Bruce, dude says, Okay, Uncle Bruce, I rolled another GameStop contract, $19 October. Uh, to a 22 uh, for April 24. Okay, so I paid eight dollars for the 19, I got 750 for the 22. Nice. I'll take the time premium over the book value, not bad if I say so myself. Exactly, exactly. you gained 300 dollars a contract for 50 bucks. Uh, yes, sir, yeah. yes, sir, excellent job, and uh, moving it up. Yes, all right, uh, what else? Getting huh? 
see how smart they're getting? Oh, they're getting smart here. Uh, Lorraine, Uncle Bruce, as per your your REC, I just bought AI deep in the money July 24, 25, um, for 22.47. I wrote a cover call Jan... 25 uh for 15.90 okay you must have purchased uh july 2025 25 dollar call so. to then write a january 2025 uh 45 dollar call unless you wrote you bought the 25 and wrote the 24 uh and you you paid 2200 to get 1590 i love this trade i i oh man a dq ai is 4650 bw hello Andy jen can you tell us when to expect that. rugman can you can oh, you tell uh i don't know i think he's lurking <laughs> he's a lurker right now uh spicy what would be a good stink sell offer for gamestop 15 dollar jan 2025 you're trying to sell a deep in the money call for money. That's what you're trying to do. And and, and that's what <laughs> for money. For for, for you know, money Arthur. for cash. I'm trying to I'm trying to do this, Bruce. I'm trying to I'm trying to make in some cash. Okay, well the GameStop shares are 2565. The fifteens are worth 1065 book wow. value right now, plus premium, depending on if there is any. Out, yeah. And you're talking about a uh, Jan 2025. So let's go as far out as we can. Um there it goes. There it goes. Okay. The 10, the 15 you were asking is showing 1060 to 1190, last at 1185. So uh, if the shares go any higher, uh, you want to pull the string on that uh, offer. Um, you want to, you want to be trying to get, uh, 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 you know, more like 17 for them, if not more, if that's possible. Uh, so maybe sixteen ninety five is what I'd offer them for, and see if they go there. Uh, if the shares go higher, though, you might go to you know another twenty thirty cents higher yet yet again. DQ AI is forty seven dollars, Bruce. Wow. AI forty six eighty up three ninety five. Kids, easy money to be had here. Buying deep in the money calls at virtually book value of these twenty and twenty fives, and writing. 45 47 50 calls against them for jan 24 my god uh, the premiums are ridiculous uh uh i would take I, this deal yeah i would absolutely take this deal they want to give you that kind of premium it's you can't not good. take that deal yeah. you can't not take that deal. Now, i have a deal for you uh oh do you want me to close your window because over in the park the city has a chipper out <laughs> well of course when the chipper, the chipper when the chipper starts they have to close the windows uh so you might as well close them now <laughs> uh they're probably waiting for nine o'clock this morning it's to rank really it up big truth. <laughs> oh my god it's like watching uh what was that movie uh at the end of the movie where there with the guys fargo, fargo. fargo. he's do, using the what? chipper on That's his buddy great movie those guys are kind of funny looking wait with it they were, they were just funny looking okay funny looking, funny looking. I, I i think i know which ones you're talking about those funny looking guys uh yeah we're up 211 on the dow right now uh we're up 20 on s p we're up 50 on nasdaq we're going higher uh it's great very interesting markets here um man oh man oh man are we having fun here um welcome to the party pals Welcome each and every one of you uh, to the show. A 950 on ATIP, that's 19 cents a share pre split. Matterport is green, it's up 13 cents to 302. Nvidia is still negative, but negative four at 425.90. We got down to 421. We've come back $4 on Nvidia. Smart rent down 12.9. SoFi is at 908, down 66. This is temporary. It's just doing a little adjusting. We're going yeah. higher. Yeah, this is going higher. A Rocket Lab down three cents, uh, down two cents on Rocket oh. Lab. We're going up on Rocket Lab. Get a right cash secured puts there. Uh, GameStop 25.57 down 13 cents. Nothing. nothing. Look at the AI is up 390 now to 46.74. Unity up 51 to 41.56. They're both going higher. See, you can tell you get excited. Oh, now you're, you're shaking your legs, which oh, makes your chair vibrate. Makes my chair. <laughs> or is it the coffee? <laughs> oh, I need you to. I get so excited for these people. I know. These people are going to get rich. It's unbelievable. Plus, uh, you're just a leg shaker by me. Well, I'm a leg shaker by you. Yeah, it's true. I, yeah. I don't know. Okay. It's a it's a guy thing. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> he's, alive. He's, al he's not dead. He's al he's alive. 
How do we, uh, oh, what is it today? Oh my gosh. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. Yeah. I tell you. Un unbelievable. Another week. Unbelievable. Shot passed. Uh, talk about time passing. Uh, I did something yesterday that I've uh, never done before. Oh. Um, I bought something online that I've never you bought did. before. I never buy online. I, Jen does this. I, I do it. I know. But you, I, you bought, so well. I bought a television. We're going to have a television. I bought us a TV. We have no TVs here. Uh, we, and can we, you believe we waited till after the hockey was over? Yeah, yeah. We didn't have a TV during for, the playoffs. For laptops and tablets. We yeah. still got to watch it. But. Yeah, yeah. We watched We watched the hockey we're game. We're so happening. We're just we, watching oh, we're so on happening. our devices. We're totally happening. We watched <laughs> the hockey games on our on our on Jennifer's uh, um, um, iPad. iPad. <laughs> that thingy. Uh, her big ass iPad. Oh, I ordered a TV yesterday through Costco, uh, a 75 inch television to be delivered to this house. Yeah, and... so we have no TV to a 75 inch. Oh, yeah, from nothing to a 75 inch. Uh, and that's going to be we're, one of two. We're we'll, going to be like six feet away. We're going to get a second one here <laughs> down the road, but right now we're getting the first one for the living room. Uh, and they deliver it, they unpack it, they set it up, they turn it on, they take the box away. Uh, that's called white glove service. This. You know why? This is convenient uh, and a two-year warranty automatically through Costco, a 90-day return policy. I'm a happy guy. Why? OTAs are starting soon. We're going to get a little uh, preseason oh. stuff going on here. DQ, NFL she's talking. Season. DQ, she's talking OTAs. The Less Steelers. 90 days away from the opening game. This, this television better be <laughs> up and working perfectly before the Steelers start playing their first games. There you go. I uh, have a few yeah. items to take out to get my shrine built. Uh huh. D DQ <laughs> says, uh, "Oh geez, eh? The chipper, huh?" <laughs> oh geez, eh? yeah. DQ is saying uh, AI forty seven eighty. Uh, yeah, yeah forty seven seventy one. A four eighty a share. Uh, Lorraine, Uncle Bruce, you have me all hyped up. I don't know if my heart could take <laughs> it. DQ. Uh, oh, it's terrible to watch a Stanley Cup at the bar. Uh, Splair, you bought a TV online. How it's getting delivered, and no one is stealing it at delivering, or the Costco delivering it. Costco's delivering it. Put um, their little booties and take it out of the box and, and bring take it the in box here. Away. Take the box away, Bobby. Uncle Bruce, are you interested in IPTV again for cable USA, UK, and Canada premium cable of thirteen dollars Canadian? Uh, I don't know what do we end up. What do we end up doing? Well, uh, yes, we did that. We did. We're doing that. We did. Uh, we're just. We're some. Jen's handling it. <laughs> Never mind, you answered already. That was really convenient. It is DQ, uh, right on Auntie Jen, right That's on right. DQ is saying uh the, those workouts are coming, getting That's ready right. for the Steeler games. She's all she's all set. It's yeah. gonna be a great season. Six week bye is the sh but she's not happy about the six week bye. She's not no. happy about that. That's but. that's horrid. But that's okay. All right. Next um, man up. We can do it. Alex just received your donation on PayPal. Looks like we're going to get together. Uh, right on, pal. We'll figure that out. Hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. Um, fantastic. Um, okay. I'm out of here. You're out of here. Bye. You're out of here. You're out of here. Okay, Auntie <laughs> Jen. We'll see you later. <laughs> Gotta get some coffee. Gotta get some coffee going here. Oh, my gosh. Um, man, oh, man. Uh, spicy laugh out loud. Now it's going to be there's no TV behind. Me, what what television? Um, DQ, a long time between that bye week and playoffs. Exactly. That's the Jen. That's Jen's issue, too. She's she's on it. All righty. ATIP 950, uh, Matterport 303.9 up 15 cents. Uh, NVIDIA down only 385. Smart Rent down 12 cents. SoFi 911 down only 63. Rocket Lab down 2 cents. GameStop down 13. AI at 4738 up 454. Deep and money calls are available to be had. Um uh Unity up a dime, uh Tesla uh down 77, Apple uh, up 154, Google up 21, uh Moderna down 55. What a, what a morning, kids. Uh we've got so much going on here. Um uh let's see here. Have an enjoyable day, Auntie Jen from Splare. DQ. There is no TV. There's only Zool. That's right. Alex, good morning, Bruce and Jen. I'll email you, Bruce, right on Alex. We'll figure it out for sure. Uh, uh, there you go. Anybody want to do a one-on-one, -on -one, make a donation to the PayPal account, 400 US, and we'll get you set up, and, uh, and away we go. Okay. Oh, we got stuff to cover here. So much to cover. Oh, man. Uh, 
203 point gain on the Dow. Nice turnaround here. Um, and uh, a lame duck. I hope you have insurance on the TV when Jen starts throwing things at the TV while watching the Steelers. Yeah, we do. Uh, we uh, we there's insurance. Uh, yeah, even through the credit card we bought it, we have insurance through that. So, and then we have insurance through the apartment and just oh man, this God, we're insurance. Yeah, there you go. Uh, fun, fun times, everybody. My goodness. Um, so much going on so much so much going on it's kind of exciting uh man this is cool stuff uh already looking i'm looking i'm looking at, at different things here while we're live thank you everybody for these thumbs ups and uh thank you for uh, be, you know renewing your memberships and everything 197 thumbs ups we are three away from 200 hit that thumbs up button folks how many times do I have to ask, please? Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, spicy, that's not a TV. That's a space station. Uh, Splare, uh, can AI go to 49.50 today? What are your thoughts? Certainly, certainly. Robert, number 197, Bruce, on the thumbs up meter. Uh, let me check something now. Um, double check, triple check, quadruple check. Here we go. The stock on AI is 46.85. Um, and you can buy a $20 call option uh, expiring January 2025. You can buy a 20. My quotes are behind, but 2480 to 2670. I mean, even if you're paying $27, you're stealing that call option for, for book value. It's unbelievable. You that's a poor man cover call begging to be written. You could turn around and write a January 24. A $50 call for 1030 to 1080, and I think you might get closer to 11 on that. So you buy a call option for 27 and write one for almost 11. What? Uh, and that's at 50. Yeah, this is pretty good stuff. Um, this is amazing to me. Uh, a $25 call option for Jan 2025, they're going for 22, 23 ish. Uh, the 25s are worth almost $22 each book value this is such a good deal the 30s are showing about um, 19 to 22 and they're worth now 17 so nine you know under 19 would be a steal on those uh but boy getting 25s or, or 20s uh geez uh you got 25 grand lying around you might get your hands on 10 deep in the money calls for january 2025 on 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 ai's these 2025 range and then write 10 calls against it. Oh man, this is good money. Again, if you are, uh, if you just uh, can get your hands on, uh, uh, if you can get your hands on cash secured puts, uh, you can play that game too. Uh, writing January 24 cash secured puts on AI, um, writing 40s, uh, you'll bring in almost 1250 a piece, put up four grand and get 1250 back. You're on the hook for 2750 a share. I don't think this is going to be a problem on AI for the next six months. Um, my goodness, the, the, the 35s are now down to 890 bit. They were $11 Monday morning, they're now 890 bit. Uh, the 45s, you can haul in almost $16 on those uh, for January 2024 expiring. I like those. Uh, Christina, I just got that thumbs up in for you, Bruce. I just did it. Thank you so much, everybody. We now have 202 thumbs up. Strickland is looking to hand out pink slips. For those of you who are not writing or not hitting the thumbs up button, don't get caught with Strickland hanging around the halls. This is good stuff. Thank you all so much for the thumbs ups and your encouragement and kind words. Thank you. Rocket Lab is green. We're up four cents. So find out 908 coming on. Uh, GameStop down one penny. We're coming on. Matterport up 17 to 306. Uh, 23 and me is up a penny. We've got um, uh, ATIP at 9.33. We've got uh, a smart rent at, at, at 3.28, which just blows my mind how cheap this thing is. That is a $15 stock masquerading as a 3.28 quote. Unbelievable. Um, I've got um, Apple up uh, 172. Uh, Goldman down a buck seven. Cisco up 27. Tesla up 29 cents. Have gone green to 256. Uh, Arc down four. Um, Microsoft up 650 to 343.84. 
Pfizer up 17, HPQ down 4 cents, Alphabet, Google down only a nickel now, it's coming back, Amazon only down 30 cents, NVIDIA still down 6 bucks, Unity down 36 cents, but AI up 4.30 a share to 47.16, that's what we got going on here, um, unbelievable what is happening here, um, fun, fun times at the OK Corral, kids, welcome to the party all and uh, oh my my uh what a run 910 now on sofi uh uh buying those cash secured puts today is an excellent idea um atip 933 thank you all for being part of the show all righty um uh, let's see jr wow uh, what role opportunities haven't had time to keep up with the feed Fin financial <coughs> financial mischief i went out to jan 25 for an ai right Sold a $60 strike uh, for $13.15. Oh, my God. Unbelievable swear. My thumbs up is installed since the mid-30s. Right on, pal. Uh, this reminds me of that run-up we had on AMC. Do you remember when AMC went from like 8 to 12 and then to 16 and then it went to 74? And people were writing $100 call options and, and 80s and they were getting $30. It, it was just it was just insanity uh then the stock went to 60 and they were writing 70s for 30 and 40 dollars they went to 50 and they were getting 55 and 60s written for 25 and 30 dollars the, the money hauled in from option gamblers was is insanity i mean there were there were all those saps who were buying these 25 30 40 50 dollar call options thinking that oh it's going to the moon amc is going to 300 dollars a share and they got crushed they lost everything buying these 20 and 30 and 40 dollar contracts and a bunch of my viewers were just delightfully writing calls into these hungry uh, buyers it was incredible ai i'm not saying ai is going to crash out but it wants to go higher you may as well take advantage of these massive premiums and if you want to be a plane on the on the on the put side you can write cash secured puts <laughs> writing writing these cash secured puts uh, is just uh, to me is a license uh to, to steal money absolutely beautiful stuff again uh up to you if you want to play this game or not you can write 35s you can write 40s 50s 47 50s uh, i mean whatever strike price turns you want real opportunities here um incredible uh splayer just in case uh, i wish everybody a successful and relaxed day Keep rocking uh, tomorrow. I won't be on the air, so I have already everyone. I have a great weekend. Splayer, you take care, buddy. Keep making the money. Uh, what year 84? I listened to Bruce and got into AI. You can find a list of AI ETFs online if anyone is interested. You can also do that. There you go. Oh, man. A 211, 211 point gain on the Dow now. 216, up 19 on SP, up 43 on NASDAQ. Oil at 69.14. There you have it. Um, ATIP now a 9.33, a Matterport up 17 to 306. Nvidia is only down now 590. We're coming back on at 424. Smart Rent down 13. SoFi at 909. Rocket Lab up seven now 576. We're going back to six bucks and higher on Rocket Lab. GameStop is up 15 cents 25.85. Ryan Cohen is running it now. Watch out. AI 4706 up 422. Unity down four cents. Tesla up 11. Apple up 172. Uh, the turnaround is happening. No doubt on that. What a morning. I'm waiting for SoFi to pop back to 10. Just wouldn't surprise me if it were to happen. I just wouldn't be surprised. Um, Zeta State, Uncle Bruce, when we first joined the Bagel Gang, um, I had 2,000 shares of UPST which uh, I sold out for GameStop. UPSD is uh, on a run. Would you purchase deep in the money calls? I don't know what UPSD is. I have, I have no idea. So I, I can't give you an opinion on it because I don't know who they are. Uh, Mr. Premium, a stinker on DraftKings just hit. I sold a $28 July covered call, uh, um, um, a $27 strike, got a dollar four for it. So I sold sold. 28 July cover call 27 strike. I don't know what 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 is what. It's a 27 dollar. What's the 28? Uh, 
I don't understand that. All right. Uh, that guy, Uncle Bruce, this SoFi dip, you think it's because of the rating downgrade? Uh, we had a run from 6 to 10. Uh, backing off a little here to 9. It's now, what, 9-12 natural forget the downgrade it's not it's a nothing burger uh jr rolled out and down in strike on five tesla 162 and a half cash secured puts upped my premium to 1550 contract killer premiums way to go jr <laughs> what year 84 etfs can sometimes make, take away some of the risk and spread out over several stocks however i'm doing great with uh all ai do you all uh, do do your own due diligence right on uh, 1984. um uh, uh can't uh, uh can't uh, um uh i listened to uncle bruce and bought an option um at 623.50 strike price up 200. uh i don't know what stock we're talking about i don't know what uh i i, I don't know uh, an option on ai oh okay that's what it is Kind of helps if you give me the symbol. I, I, you know, every little thing, I do what I can. Uh, Mr. Premium, a uh, 20th July expiry on this uh, on this contract. Uh, uh, way to go, making money, kids. Um, we're up 221 on the Dow. Uh, uh, Matterport up 19 to 308. Uh, Nvidia's just only down four now. It's coming up again. Smart Rent 331 down 14. So far 912. Inching along, a uh, SoFi's low 888 high of 920, uh, 37 million shares on SoFi in uh, about an hour. Uh, we're going higher. This, this thing's going higher. Uh, this this is a temporary uh, dip. If it lasts the day, I'll be surprised. We'll see. Uh, but I I have a feeling SoFi is going to break out again. Um, it looks like it wants to go. Clay, I bought shares. When SoFi was in the low fives and sixes, um, I want to lock in some profit now with it being at nine. Would writing $11 Jan 2024 cash secured puts for the shares I sell a decent idea? The puts are 305 right now. Um, the puts book value is $2.89. Uh, because they're 11s. Am I correct on that? Uh, or am I wrong on my numbers? I, uh, they might be 289. Uh, two, 289 is the book value of those uh, 11s. I, or is it one? Eight, I, I can't do math on the fly today. I'm too tired. Um, I think we're a dollar, we're a dollar 87 book value on those 11s because the stock's 913. Uh, so the rest is premium. Um, and you're talking about writing uh, writing Jan 2024s. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, yeah, uh, I, I really don't think you should sell your stock. I think just just, just let the stock go higher. Um, I understand the cash secured put game. I understand it. You can write elevens, uh, and if the shares go up to eleven, these are worthless. And you get 305, um, all yours. Um, you need the money to write these puts. You need you need eleven hundred dollars to write one put. You know, sell your stock for nine twelve, cough up some more cash, write eleven dollar puts uh, between now and Jan twenty four. It goes to twelve thirteen dollars. These puts will drop down dramatically, even if you buy back at a buck. You'll make a couple of bucks on it, which is like going from nine to eleven dollars a share. Uh, but if the shares go from nine to twelve, thirteen, they go up eleven. They go up three, four dollars. You only make two dollars. I get it. Um, and uh, and or uh, should you write uh, ten or eleven dollar calls right now? Should you just write those uh, for January twenty twenty four? I don't recommend it because again, I think there's this thing moving it this up move coming but clay i get where you're coming from i i see this trade i don't disagree with it uh just don't like seeing you lose your shares but i know what you're doing you're you're betting on the upside of the stock by taking this gain from five six to nine uh locking that in and now writing the cash secured put i i get this move uh, so 
you know, you're comfortable with it, um, no more power to you. And if, if you take a couple of bucks off the top on this trade and then roll into 12s or 13s, perhaps to further into 2024 a few months from now, maybe that's your next move. It's it's all it's all good. If you're forced to buy back the stock, of course, um, with three dollar premium, you're going to have to pay. What is that? Seven ninety five. You have to buy them back. Um, do you mind? You don't mind. So there you go. Maybe maybe that trade is going to work for you. Maybe it'll work. Keep me posted. Uh, absolutely, all kinds of ways to play this market. We're up two fourteen on the Dow. Um, what else is happening here? Um, okay, we're up 17 on S&P, almost 18, and we're up 39 on NASDAQ. Oil is at 69.26, up 99 cents. Okay, kids, there you go. Uh, lots of all kinds of possibilities here. Oh, does it never end? 208 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. 208, keep them coming if you can. I appreciate it. Uh, that is a beautiful thing to see. 208 thumbs ups. There are 218 of you here. Welcome to those of you still hanging around after two hours on this show. It's nice to have you here. Uh, 933 on ATIP. Uh, the volume, 56,000. Multiply that by 50, and you've got 2.8 million shares pre-split trading hands today. So there's your, your idea of what's going on here. 933 on ATIP. T I P. Uh, we'll be watching ATIP um, going forward for option trading. Um, when 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 that happens, how that happens, if and when, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, we'll also be watching for any announcements corporately reorganizing this company's debts and all that stuff. Um, Double checking, yeah. No, I see no indicated trades on any contracts at this point in time. Uh, I don't think so. So we'll wait for Chicago. What are they going to say? I have no idea. All right. Um, thank you all um, for being here today. Okay. Moving on. Um, thank you again for, for hanging out with me today. 213 thumbs ups. I so appreciate this. Uh, I can only say to all of you out there who are following this channel and are still hanging around here after two hours plus today, I can only say neat, 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 neat. The knee attack is underway from Uncle Bruce to you. The Knights of Knee, uh, I hope, will take care of you and guide uh, and guard over your option trades and your contracts. Larry Titus knows. Neat, 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 neat. There he is. Uh, the knee emojis are coming in. Uh, thank you all, Splare. Thank you. Um, keep the game going, kids. 9-10 on your SoFi. We'll see how it goes. Rocket Lab's up four. Uh, Matterport up 16. Uh, we got some gains beginning to show up here on some of our faves. Uh, congratulations, Cash Secured Put Option Writers. Congratulations, Call Option Writers. Congratulations, Deep in the Money Call Option Buyers today, especially on on, on AI, my goodness, uh, what opportunities are coming along, being able to buy deep in the money AI calls, and then writing calls right away against them. Beautiful returns. Kevin, way to go. Thank you, Karen. Uh, JR, thank you. Spicy, thank you. JR, neat, 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 neat. Here come the uh, neat emojis from around the world for this channel. Thank you all. 217 thumbs ups. Thank you, thumbs uppers, and all of you on the rerun out there. Thank you for hitting the thumbs ups as well. This is much appreciated. Fantastic stuff. The Big E is here. Neat, 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 neat. Thank you all for joining in and being part of the show today. Oh, my goodness. Um, it has been one hell of a run here. And uh, uh, looks like more fun is coming down the turnpike. I love this. Uh, GameStop up 16. AI up 287. Unity's up 8. Tesla down three cents, Apple up 153, Google down 36, giddy up everybody, Moderna down 43, Cisco up 33, Pfizer up 18, IBM up 46, HPQ down a penny, Microsoft up 644, giddy on up there, Amazon down 75 cents, Home Depot up 150, Vanek down 147, Netflix up four, Adobe up 260, 
keep an eye on those markets, folks. Uh, this is going to be something. Uh, SoFi cash secured puts under my belt, says Beach Boy. Sitting good on the old sofas, right on, pal. Right on, thank you, Uncle Bros. Neat, 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 neat. You got our beach point. Thank you, my friend, and all of you out there. Keep making money. Uh, let that option market make you rich. Uh, these GameStop, these gamblers on GameStop, SoFi, Rocket Lab, AI, uh, and everything else, they are going to hand you a ton of dough. And you might as well take it from them and say, thank you. May I have another? Thank you, lame duck. Nee, 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 nee. Thank you. All right, kids, that's it from here. Um, any messages, let me know with private emails. And I look forward to uh, getting together with some of you for one-on-ones if you'd like. Uh, we're available. I'm available perhaps uh, today, tomorrow, Saturday, but not Sunday. Uh, let's see if we can get together when it works out for you. Thank you, each and every one of you, for your support of this tiny little YouTuber out here in the sticks. Of uh, 221 thumbs up. Thanks again for that. You guys are awesome. And I will talk to you uh, tomorrow morning. First thing, uh, Gold Bagel members, don't forget, 8 o'clock. Everyone else at 830 Come on in and enjoy the show, and let's see how these markets react all day today. Okay, from Calgary, this is Uncle Bruce saying thank you. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Make a ton of money out there and keep me posted. We'll talk to you real soon, everybody. Bye for now.